This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Descended directly from the famous T-34 medium tank, known as the Soviet Union's armored savior, the T-54-55 series is the most produced tank in history, with an estimated 100,000 models. A light tank with great maneuverability, the T-54-55 series had the ability to cross areas where Western tanks would usually get stuck. And in addition to being the world's most potent frontline combat vehicle, the series had accessible systems that could be operated even by the lowest ranks. According to the American author and defense consultant Steven Zaloga, quote, The T-54 was an excellent tank combining lethal firepower, excellent armor protection, and good reliability. For over 75 years, whether a coup d'etat or a civil war broke out anywhere in the world, there was, and still is, a big chance that a Soviet T-54 or 55 series primary battle tank participated in the conflict, as the type continues to be popular with small nations and non-state irregular armed forces. From the Soviet Union to Vietnam, the Congo, Iraq, and Syria, this Red Army beast has proved that economic, well-made, simple, and lethal tanks are still good enough to give the enemy absolute hell. The Soviet rise to power following World War II could not have been possible without the Russian T-54 or 55 series combat tanks. Now, you can take command of the iconic main battle tank, as well as over 2,000 other planes, tanks, helicopters, and warships by joining War Thunder, the most comprehensive online military vehicle combat game we've ever played. Click on the link in the description below to experience your favorite modern warfare combat vehicles in incredible detail. Each is modeled down to their individual components, spanning over a hundred years of technological developments from the 1920s to today. Immerse yourself in realistic graphics and glorious 4K resolution that guarantees the ultimate gameplay experience. We love the precise attention to historical accuracy, and we were immediately immersed in the intuitive and easy-to-control gameplay. Click on the link below to play for free and wage war from your PC, Xbox Series X or S, PlayStation 5, and even from previous gen consoles. War Thunder's combat vehicles pay a reverent homage to their real-life counterparts in a way that has to be experienced to be believed. Take advantage of War Thunder's exclusive reward to our viewers by clicking the link below to register as a new player and get a premium tank, aircraft, warship, and a 7-day account upgrade, as well as exclusive Dark Docs decals for your vehicles. We'll meet you on the battlefield, Commander. An outdated savior. Near the end of World War II, the Soviet Union's tank arsenal was made up mainly of T-34 medium tanks, along with several IS-2 and IS-3 heavy tanks. This T-34 Pernodlegit Chetverki tank was known as the Soviet Union's armored savior. At the peak of the T-34's production, the 1940s tank was considered to have the best balance of firepower, protection, and mobility range for its cost of any tank in the world. In addition, the series was continually upgraded and fine-tuned throughout the war, never ceasing production and performing outstandingly well against the Nazis. Still, by the time the war was approaching its end, the Russian engineers considered that its leaf spring suspension and 85mm gun were outdated, and the designers could not incorporate the latest technologies into their once-star vehicle. The IS series of heavy tanks, an acronym standing for Josef Stalin, proved to be quite a match against Germany's most potent Panzer-armored vehicles. However, the vehicles had a low rate of fire and ammunition reserve, and IS crews had to load giant 122mm shells and propellant charges into the tank's cannon separately. The desire for a fresh and new design led the Soviets to create a new steel monster, the T-54 and the improved T-55 medium tank. Simple and effective. In 1943, the Morozov Design Bureau, a state-owned company that developed armored vehicles, resurrected the pre-war T-34M project to create the T-54 tank. Consequently, the designers got to work on the new tank by late 1944, and the engineers were heavily influenced by the Soviet experience during World War II. Although the war in Europe ended the following May, work on the new tank continued, as the Russians direly needed a replacement for the old T-34 series. 
After several design revisions and numerous engineering fixes, prototype T-54 was ready for evaluation in 1946. Initial trials proved promising, and the design was formally accepted into service by the Red Army. The T-54 was an unquestionably superior armored vehicle than its predecessors, with 7.99-inch thick armor and a 35-ton weight. Plus, the new tank was equipped with a new transmission system, as well as a 520-horsepower V-12 diesel engine. Built around the powerful 100mm D-10 series main gun, the T-54 was also one of the world's most potent frontline combat tanks. It also carried secondary armament that consisted of two 7.62mm machine guns in the hull and another in the turret, and a 12.7mm anti-aircraft gun mounted on the loader's hatch. Based on the T-44 medium tank's chassis, the T-54's turret was cast in one piece with the top welded on, a common Soviet technique in warfare vehicles. In addition, the tank had a cabin layout similar to many post-war tanks, a dome-shaped turret in its hull's center, the fighting compartment in the front, and the engine compartment in the rear. And it was designed for four crew members to operate it, a driver, a commander, a gunner, and a loader. Revolutionary Features The tank presented several significant drawbacks during its testing phase that required immediate attention. Nevertheless, the Soviet authorities formally ordered the new promising vehicle into serial production in 1947, with evaluations still underway. Production of the initial series began rolling out slowly, as almost 1,500 modifications were being made simultaneously, but the Red Army welcomed the tank with open arms as it was considered superior to previous Kremlin designs and potentially better than the newest armored vehicles of potential opponents. Mechanically simple to use, yet robust enough for battle, the T-54 tanks were easier to operate than Western ones and did not require a high level of training or education among the crew members, allowing for a larger production. It was also a smaller main battle tank than contemporary models from other countries, proving to be a difficult target with excellent mobility due to its relatively light weight. This characteristic allowed for easy transportation by rail or flatbed truck, wide tracks, and a cold-weather startup system, perfect for Russian winters. Notably, it was the first Soviet tank able to operate completely underwater thanks to a snorkel that allowed it to cross bodies of water at depths of up to 18 feet. The T-54 is mainly known as the T-54-T-55 series, as its eventual successor, the T-55, is quite similar and difficult to distinguish in plain sight. Their only visible difference is a gap between the first and second road wheels. Soviet Victories After its introduction, the T-54-55 main battle tank was supplied to a large number of armies around the world, becoming an iconic armored vehicle. Although the exact numbers are unknown, the Russians rolled out a staggering approximate of 83,500 T-54 tanks in the next 15 years, while the Polish and Czechs deployed around 20,000 more. The Soviet vehicle first served in combat during the 1956 Hungarian Revolution, a countrywide conflict against the government and the domestic policies imposed by the Soviet Union. In the Hungarian capital of Budapest, the Soviet army used the tank to attempt to crush the anti-Soviet Hungarian resistance fighters and rebels that overthrew the pro-Soviet regime using Molotov cocktails and several anti-tank guns. Although the defending forces successfully knocked a few tanks out, the T-54 was crucial in the Soviet victory, and the Russian army successfully repressed the revolution. Still, the first appearance of the medium tank turned into a humiliating affair as anti-communist revolutionaries captured a vehicle and sent it to the British Embassy in Budapest, giving Western experts a close look at all its strengths and weaknesses. The investigations and studies of the sturdy medium tank's powerful armament subsequently spurred the West to create its own counterparts, such as the UK's Royal Ordnance L7 and the United States M60 Patton. The T-55 while the T-54 was performing in combat, Soviet designers began working on the T-55. This main battle tank was mostly the same as the T-54, albeit with a new turret and a more powerful version of the V-12 diesel engine with 580 horsepower. Most of the tank's improvements were internal, 
including a rotating turret floor, eliminating the loader's cupola, and improved transmission. The new T-55 model entered service between 1959 and 1960, with an anti-aircraft 12.7mm turret machine gun. Also, the previous 7.62mm machine gun was removed to make room for nine more main gun ammunition rounds, and the second machine gun placed next to the main cannon was replaced with the new 7.62mm PKT general purpose gun. A much more advanced model was then adapted to Cold War nuclear necessities in 1961. These adaptations included an air filtration system to scrub out chemical and biological agents and radiation lining. Still, none of the T-54-55 tank series had proper nuclear, biological, chemical warfare protection for the four-person crew. Vietnam China cloned the T-54 model for the People's Liberation Army, naming it Type 59 and delivering it to North Korea, North Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, with as many as their armies required. During the Vietnam War, the People's Army of Vietnam used both T-54-55s and China's Type 59 extensively against the South Vietnamese and their allied United States forces. The type's introduction in the conflict occurred in Operation Lam Son 719 in February of 1971, in which South and North Vietnam engaged each other with tanks for the first time. During the armed dispute, North Vietnamese tank units using T-54s were involved in over 200 battles. Also, the type destroyed over 2,000 enemy tanks and 870 other military vehicles, obliterated 3,500 enemy bunkers, and shot down 35 military aircraft, only losing 250 to their enemies. However, the tank's presence in Vietnam exposed one crucial vulnerability. The hostile turret conditions in the area reduced the Soviet tank's practical rate of fire to a disappointing four rounds per minute, while a 1970 Western tank crew could fire the same number of shells in only 15 seconds. In addition, North Vietnamese tank crews were often poorly trained in the vehicle's operation, making them easy prey for hunter units armed with anti-tank weaponry. Still, by the mid-1970s, the T-54-55 series and the T-62 were still the most common tanks in the Soviet arsenal, and the two types comprised approximately 85% of the Soviet Army's tanks. Further expansion The T-54 also spread to the Middle East, with dozens of countries operating the type and its Chinese counterparts. The tank participated in the 1973 Yom Kippur War, an armed conflict between Israel and a coalition of Arab states led by Egypt and Syria. While the Syrian-owned T-54-55s outnumbered the Israeli tanks, the Israelis shot down the Syrians with anti-tank guns fired from the Golan Heights. The tank also took part in the beginning stages of the Soviet-Afghan War, a nine-year guerrilla conflict between insurgent groups, known collectively as the Mujahideen, against the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan and the Soviet Army. Then, in late 1979, about 800 Soviet tanks were used in around 39 battalions, only losing one in action. Still, the tank was becoming too obsolete for modern warfare by then. With abysmally uncomfortable crew conditions, slow shooting, shaky riding, and a tendency to throw its tracks, the T-54-55 was slowly replaced by the T-62, T-64, T-72, T-80, and T-90 armored vehicles in the Soviet and Russian armies. A few years later, during the liberation of Kuwait in 1991, the Iraqi army left their T-54-55 tanks in stationary positions in the middle of the desert, and this tactical blunder turned the tanks into standstill targets for coalition airstrikes. If it ain't broke. The T-54-55 tank was built in the Soviet Union, Poland, Czechoslovakia, and the People's Republic of China, and estimated production numbers ranged from 96,500 to 100,000, making it the most mass-produced military tank in history. Used by 47 nations on both sides of the Iron Curtain, the series is so popular that an extensive array of modernization packages and installations have been made available around the world. These international variants include armored recovery vehicles, combat engineering vehicles, firefighters, mine clearers, command versions, bridge layers, flamethrowers, 
self-propelled guns, and an armored personnel carrier. The Soviet-made tank has managed to achieve all this while being significantly smaller and lighter than its North Atlantic Treaty Organization contemporaries. But while the T-54-55 is present all over the world, the tank is commonly on the losing side when fighting more advanced and modern Western designs. Still, the tank's simplicity, availability, and adaptability continue to be the primary reasons it is still used, even 75 years after its introduction, serving in up to 50 armies in many of the world's largest armed conflicts as far back as the mid-20th century, and with as many as 39,000 tanks still in operation. Currently, captured Iraqi and Syrian T-55s serve under the Islamic State. For these insurgent yet lethal armies, the 75-year-old tanks are just as useful, proving once again that sometimes simple and effective is best. And it looks pretty likely that the T-54 or 55 series will continue to serve past its 100th birthday. Thank you for watching our video, and thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring it. Don't forget to click on the link in the description to play for free and reclaim your 7-day boost and a premium tank, aircraft, and warship. All players can get exclusive Dark Docks decals for your vehicles. We'll be looking out for you.